God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Forever be the now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Joy at the harvest, 
his people exult in dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampled warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Our psalm this evening is Psalm 96. Let us read responsibly by half verse. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord and bless His name. For the salvation from day to day. Declare His glory among the nations. And His wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. Oh, the majesty and magnificence of his presence. Oh, the power of his splendor of the sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you, families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations. The Lord is king. He has made the world so firm that it cannot be moved. He will judge the people to the heavenly. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord when he comes. When he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness. And the people of this earth. A reading from Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions. And in the present age, to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly. While we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us that we might redeem, that he might redeem us from all impure inequity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord.
days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own town to register. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born in this city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find the child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those who have been favored. When the angels had left them and gone into Bethlehem, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
blessed Christmas to you all and welcome in the name of the God who loves you unconditionally in Christ. It's a tough world out there, I don't need to tell you that. But it's good that we've gathered tonight to seek the hope of the ages, who is Christ. May he be more in us this night. The story is told of some parents that were putting their child to bed one night. And as they were tucking their daughter in, after reading her bedtime story, after saying their prayers, they said goodnight, and she said, but Daddy, don't leave me alone, I'm scared of the dark. And he said, but God is with you. And she said, yeah, yeah, I know that, but I need some skin. <laughs> we all need skin. Because we're designed for community. Yet through the mar of sin, we too often find ourselves isolated, divided, and filled in pockets of hate. Yet we know we're called to something more. We're called to connection and peace. Perhaps this is why it's been said that if what the world needed was money, God would have sent an economist. And if what the world needed was knowledge, God would have sent a teacher. And if what the world needed was technology, God would have sent a scientist. But rather, what the world needed and continues to need today is forgiveness. And that is why God has sent us a Savior with skin. We call this the incarnation in theological terms. That God became one of us in the flesh. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. We have beheld His glory, John's Gospel says. Glory as of the only Son from the Father. If you go to Rome and look at the Sistine Chapel, you can still see today that beautiful painting by Michelangelo entitled Creation of Adam. And if you look closely, you see God the Father pictured with a very strong hand and an even stronger finger reaching out to Adam. Adam, on the other hand, is reaching to God, but his hand is a bit limp, frail, weak. And there's a space between the two fingers. They don't touch. Now what Jesus came to do is to bridge that gap through his touch in this world. If you look at the ministry of Jesus, it was all about touch. He called little children when people tried to dismiss them, and he says, come to me, and he put his hand on them and bless them. When he saw the hurting and those that were held captive by all kinds of ailments, he touched them. He put his fingers in their ears and said, here, and they heard. He touched the tongue of one who was mute, and he spoke. He touched the eyes of a blind man, and he would see. And people would marvel at this, and they'd say, we've never seen it this way. He makes the deaf hear, and the mute speak. He has done all things well. Just before his crucifixion, just as he was being arrested, one of his disciples saw the slave of the high priest who was carrying out the arrest, took out a sword, and took off his ear. Luke's Gospel tells us that Jesus immediately put his hand on his head and healed the ear with touch, the very touch that can bridge us to the Father, because he has reconciled us to the Father and has given us this ministry of reconciliation as we receive Christ. We need the touch of God in this world. Sometimes there can seem to be a disconnect between these stories from so long ago in our life today. The world does not seem to be getting any better. But that wasn't the point. The point of the incarnation of God coming among us in the flesh was to be with us in the world and to show us a better way and to point us to something beyond this world which still involves the redemption of our flesh. It's called the resurrection of the dead. We cannot look at this crash, this cradle, without seeing the cross. And the cross did not have the last word, for Christ is risen. He appeared resurrected in a body of flesh and bone. He even said to his disciples, ghosts don't have this. And he invited them to touch him. 
just as he had touched the world, he said, touch me, see that it's me. And the way this connects today, even if there seems to be an historic disconnect between stories and reality, it's this, those stories are true, it's God's authoritative word, and it's made manifest today as Christ lives in us, what the Bible calls the hope of glory. In other words, in our very flesh, in our weakness, God is made strong and continues to touch the world in Jesus Christ through us. And as we gather together, something's happening. I can feel it. It's the power of his peace, which the world cannot give, which we're called to experience and to live out and to share. We cannot fix the world. But nevertheless, we can live out the fullness of God and touch lives one by one as we surrender to his touch. I came across a quote by Mark Twain recently. It said, there are two vital days in one's life. The day you're born then the day you realize why you were born. Do you know why you were brought into this world? Do you know that you're a gift? That you're made in the image of God? And that you're designed to be with others, with common touch, showing forth the glory of Christ? Many have no idea what their purpose in the world is. It's one of the greatest sources of unhappiness. Because each and every one of us, we have this cross-shaped hole in our hearts. And we try to fill it with everything but Christ. And then we come to the end of our rope and we realize that we'll give him a try. We'll let him in. And we find that as the hope of the ages, he is able to answer all those questions we've had, but we get no answers anywhere else. He is able to fill that hole in the soul. He is able to complete us and make us whole, so that we can in turn make others whole as we share his glory. Now, if this seems somewhat pie in the sky, consider these words from the 1600s from John Bunyan. Hope has thick skin and will endure many a blow. As I stood on the bur and burning beams of a pile of steel that was called the World Trade Center the day before, and as I searched, after finding a fire helmet with other first responders and could find no one. The touch of those fellow first responders as we helped each other up and down those beams that were flashing with sparks and under the beating of helicopter wings, the one thing that I could hold on to was that sense of connection in the flesh. Knowing that we were doing God's work in the most difficult circumstances. Yet, whether it's 9-11 or any of these other tragedies we find ourselves before, have you noticed that hope cannot be kept down forever? That the light shines in the darkness and the darkness is not overcome it? Because hope has thick skin. It endures many a blow. I'm not sure what you've gone through lately. I know it's some of you. And if you're visiting for the first time, welcome. Know that this is a safe place to find healing and acceptance and the touch of Christ through his followers. If your heart's yearning for something more, open it up to Christ. Even if our flesh gives out of this world. There's a promise in the next of complete wholeness, which is the ultimate healing. And an ancient figure named Job, spelled J-O-D, put it powerfully when he saw through a vision one who would come, who would bring about resurrection and the redemption of our mere flesh. As he said, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that in the end he will stand on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh 
I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes, how my heart yearns within me. If your heart is yearning for something more than this world can give you, let him in. May the hope of the ages, who is Christ the Lord, be born in us tonight. God bless you all. A very Merry Christmas. Amen. Please. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, the begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified in the conscious Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no ends. We believe in the Holy Spirit.
Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Welcome in the name of our loving Savior, Jesus Christ. If you're visiting for the first time, I'll make some general instructions for you so you feel comfortable around the community. And please notice that all are welcome to receive at the Lord's table. It's not ours, but God's. However, if you're not a baptized Christian proclaiming Christ as Lord and Savior, it's best if you wait to receive communion and instead put your arms across your chest for a blessing. But nevertheless, please come forward. The ushers will show you the way up. And we don't have a gluten-free wafer if one needs that. So if you let me know as I'm coming around with the bread, I'll be happy to give that to you instead of the regular wafer. Please also note that we'll have prayer service. Prayer teams, that is. Waiting to pray with you if you need any kind of prayer after the service. They'll be up around the altar. So once everybody has made their way out, you're welcome to stay around and come forward for any kind of prayer need you may have. I wish you all the best from our staff at St. Paul's Church, from everyone here. God bless you. Have a wonderful Christmas. And keep showing the love of Christ in word and deed. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, so come, let us adore him.
be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and thanks for grace. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ your only Son to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made a perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Yeah. 
why not? say together the closing prayer, you may either stay seated or kneel. <coughs> Almighty and ever living God, God, we thank, thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son, and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen.
the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.